Hi, this is Jeremy with Fundamental Tennis. In this video, I'm going to show you how to hit a reliable and effective second serve. I know you may be struggling with the quality of your second serve. Maybe you're double faulting a lot. Your second serve can be putting you on defense straight away to start the rally. Here's a great video for you to help you with the quality and consistency of your second serve. Specifically, what I will be showing you is progressions, very simple progressions in which you don't even need a coach or another player with you, you just need a few tennis balls. These progressions are going to show you how to hit a kick serve. Now, for those of you who don't know what a kick serve is, a kick serve is a type of serve in which you're making the ball have top spin and a bit of a diagonal side spin. So the ball has top spin and spins from 7 o'clock to 1 o'clock if we think of it as a clock. Now, the reason you want to have a kick serve is because you can swing as fast as you can, as fast as you want, and that ball will still go in the service box because of that top spin. Just like a ground stroke, when you hit top spin, it makes the ball drop before it goes long past the service line if done correctly. Now, the benefits of hitting a kick serve is also that it can make the ball bounce away from the returner or into the returner's body based on your uh, tactical intent. Now, also, the ball bounce is very high, more so than any other type of serve. So, not only do you get good height over the net with a kick serve, but you get good height after the bounce, and that will get the ball to go above the returner's strike zone. So, in these progressions of learning a kick serve, I'm going to talk about the contact point, the swing path, the grip, and the toss. So these four things are the only things or the most important things you need to hitting a kick serve. So let's dive right into the video and I hope that you enjoy. First thing we need to establish is what grip should you use for the kick serve. In other words, how should you position your hand on the grip of your racket? Now the correct grip for the kick serve is the continental grip. So to find the continental grip, you want to hold your racket as if you're hammering a nail. The continental grip is also referred to as the hammer grip for this reason. Again, pretend that you're holding a hammer and you should naturally find the correct grip for your kick serve. Another way to find the right grip is if we take a look at my racket, I'd like you to have your racket like mine is in which the frame of the racket is pointing up. Now if we look at the grip, there are eight sides or eight bevels to the grip. If I, I have my finger right now on bevel one, which is the top bevel, if we go one bevel to the right, we are now on bevel two, which is the golden bevel. That is the continental grip. So what part of our hand goes in line with the second bevel or the continental bevel? Now I have two X's on my hand I use as a reference to finding the grip. This is the under base index knuckle that goes on bevel two. And then this is the center of the heel pad that also goes on bevel two. So again, find bevel two by having your frame of your racket pointing up. We put our finger on bevel one, which is the top bevel. Now move your finger one bevel to the right. You now have found bevel two here. And I just put the X's or the under base knuckle and the center of my heel pad in line with that second bevel. So now that I have the hammer grip, now that we have the continental grip, you have a chance to have a great kick serve. I want you to really understand what a kick serve is or how to do a kick serve so that when we do the progressions, it really makes a lot of sense. So the first thing I want to talk about is the contact point. When you do a flat or slice serve, the racket head is going to be pretty much directly above the hitting hand as you can see here. However, on a kick serve, the racket head should be well to the inside of your hitting hand. So the racket is, is uh, diagonal to, to your left, or the tip of the racket is pointing to your left if you are a righty. Now, the reason the contact point should be like this, as you see the contact is lower here compared to a flat serve is here. The reason the contact should be lower on a kick serve is because just like a forehand or a backhand ground stroke, you have to swing low to high. Now on a kick serve, if I hit the ball as high as I can, I can't go any higher. So I've already done the low to high part prior to contact. Now, the contact should be in the middle of the low to high. So I swing up to contact, I make contact here, 
and then after contact, I continue up, up, up. That's what creates the topspin, just like a ground stroke. Again, just like a ground stroke, you swing low to high to create topspin. So contact is to the inside of the hitting hand, and it's lower. Therefore, the ball toss has to drop lower prior to contact. And then again, after contact, you just continue to go up. So it's different in that sense compared to a flat serve or a slice serve. Now, when it comes to the swing path, when you hit a flat serve or a slice serve, the swing path is much more towards the target. So if, if you are my target, the camera's my target, I'm swinging this way. However, on a kick serve, the swing path is much more along the baseline as opposed to towards my target. Now, if we have a clock around us, I want you to visualize as a righty swinging more towards 2 o'clock or 2.30 as opposed to swinging towards 12 o'clock. So the reason the kick serve swing path is more to the right as a righty is because that is what's going to help you create that side spin, right? So we've got contact lower for the top spin and we have the swing path more along the baseline for the side spin. When it comes to the toss, if you have a good toss for a kick serve and don't hit it, the ball should land about right in between your eyes. So the main difference in a kick serve toss compared to a flat or slice serve toss is if there's a clock above us here now, the ball toss should go towards 11 o'clock as opposed to 12 o'clock. So the toss is more to the left. The reason being is getting that toss more to your left is gonna allow you to get that, establish the swing path to the right. Okay, so the toss should land about on your head, contact is lower on a kick serve, and the swing path is very much up and to the right if you are a righty. In this first progression, you don't need a tennis racket. You simply need a tennis ball, and you're just gonna take your non-dominant hand, hold it at head level with the palm of your hand facing you. Notice how the fingers of my hand are together. I don't have them separated. So fingers together, palm to your face, and the palm, palm of your hand is at head level. You're gonna take a tennis ball now and sandwich the ball in between both of your hands. This progression is great to work on the contact of the kick serve and especially to give you a feel for the swing path that you need. So from here, you're just gonna roll the ball up your non-dominant hand a few times, ensure that your non-dominant hand is stable with the fingers together. And after you've done a few rolls like this, you take the ball, push it against the bottom of your non-dominant hand and simply swing up like so. And I held the finish, I let the ball hit me because I wanna, I wanna emphasize that high, that low to high swing path and ensure that I finished high. I'll show you one more time. Sandwich the ball in between your hands and you're simply going to go up a few times if you want and then notice how that ball went high after I released it. So if the ball doesn't go high, that means that you're not swinging up enough or you're changing the angle of your non-dominant hand. So try a few reps of that and then you'll soon feel what it's like to have the kick serve swing pad. We're gonna do the same thing we just did in the previous progression, but this time you now have a racket. So you sandwich the ball between your hand and the strings of your racket. Your hand and the ball should be at head level. We start with the ball at the bottom of your palm, as you can see here, and then from here, you're going to swing up and then finish with the tip of your racket pointing up and your hitting arm straight. I'll show you one last time. Sandwich the ball between your non-dominant hand and the strings of your racket. Now from here, you're going to maybe roll up the hand a few times, get a feel for it, and then from here we go here. Hold the finish, see how my hitting arm is straight, my racket is pointing up. Remember to ensure that your grip is correct, you have the continental grip, and that, that progression is great to feel, again, the contact point, the swing path, and get you out of the habit of the flat and slice serve in which it's a very different contact point and swing path. The next progression is a bit of a two-parter or I should say a, a two options that you can choose from, two variations that you can choose. Now the first option you can do is you're going to hold the top of the grip or near the throat and you're going to start with the racket in front of your face as you did for the previous progression. However, you are going to toss the ball up a little bit 
and after contact, you're going to finish in the same position. So I toss, contact, and finish. So I hold the finish, make sure that I finish as high as I could. I'm going to show you from the back view the same thing I just did. So I start with the strings right in front of my face, facing the target. I toss a little bit, not doing the typical higher toss. It's a very, very low toss, pretty much just tossing to where your racket is. So I toss the ball up a little bit, make contact, and then I finish high. So you should see the ball spinning end over end forward like a bicycle tire if you did it correctly. You should see that top spin. Now, another option here is some, some of my players have difficulty with that progression, so I like to have them do this. So I have the frame of the racket gently on the top of your head. You're going to toss the ball up, wait as long as possible before contact, hit it just a couple inches above your head. So I'll show you from the back view here. So I'm, I wait for the ball to come down, make contact, and I finish high. That wasn't the, my best toss. Let me try again. I'll show you from the side view. Frame of the racket gently on your head. You toss the ball, wait as long as you can, make contact, and then after contact, you continue the racket up with the racket pointing to the ceiling. So remember, you want to make contact prior to your highest reach. As you may have noticed, each progression is going to be a bit more challenging a little bit more realistic, and we're gonna add uh, parts to the serve in each progression. So, in this progression, you're gonna hold the racket at the bottom of the grip now. I'd like you to serve from the ad side if you're a righty, and if you're a lefty, you serve from the deuce side. Now, you can also serve over curtain or over a fence, as it's a very high target to hit over. So I like to do this with a lot of my players to encourage them to swing up. But I'm gonna do this into the court, or rather, I'm really just trying to get the technique down and not necessarily trying to get it in. So the higher that ball goes after I hit, the more I can see that I have done it correctly. I can hear the spin, I can see the spin. So we're gonna hold it again at the bottom of the grip. I start with the racket all the way down my back and move forward so you can see me here. I'm going to toss the ball, wait as long as possible before contact, wait as long as possible to swing up because it's very common that players swing up too early on the kick serve and they make contact too high because they're so used to on a flat serve and a slice serve hitting the ball higher. So I'm really going to exaggerate. You'll see how long I wait for the ball. You'll see how low I make contact. So I toss it above my head, I make contact, I notice I finish with the racket pointing up, my arm is straight, so I hold that finish to make sure that I've got the high part of the low to high swing path. Rack it down the back, toss it above my head, wait for it, contact. That was not a good hit, but the swing path was great. Everything there was terrific except I hit the frame. I'm not perfect either. Now this time I'm going to swing, uh, do my serve over the curtain. I'm going to hit it over the curtain. I think, again, I think that's a great idea. I think it's better to do that for these first, these next couple of progressions. So I toss the ball up, wait as long as I can, contact. That was a really good one. I almost hit the ceiling there. So we're really exaggerating the low to high. We're not trying to get power. If you're trying to get power, then your swing path will probably be incorrect. So you should see a very high trajectory. You should feel the difference. You should feel the brush, and you should hear it. Just to be clear, I don't want you using your legs or jumping off the ground just yet. When learning the kick serve, it's important to use as little body parts as possible and keep everything simple. Just get a feel for the swing path and how everything works. So in this progression now, I'm going to be on the ground, knee on the ground. I'm going to be hitting the ball over a curtain here, but you could be standing up doing the same thing or you can serve it into the service box. This is just the variation I chose because I love to do this with my players as it makes them feel very short 
and of course, so, so it really encourages them to hit up. And the tall curtain here is just a bonus. So now we're going to start in the trophy position with the hitting arm in this L position or throwing position. You're going to toss the ball up, racket down the back, throw the racket up at the ball, and finish with the racket pointing up. So I toss it as if I'm going to toss it onto my head. Contact is low, and then I finish holding the finish. So we're not following through just yet. That's in another progression or two when we get the finishing touches. So trophy position, I got my continental grip, toss the ball over my head, wait for contact, make contact, hold the finish, check the finish. You should hear the spin, it should feel different, and that is it for this progression. Last two progressions. I want you to get into your usual serve ready position. You're going to do the motion that you've always done with your serve, although we have now, of course, adapted our technique to a kick serve in that the toss is different as well as the swing path and contact is a little different. So I'm going to show you from the side view first. One last time, we're going to finish with the racket pointing up, and then soon we're going to get that full follow through. So not trying to kill the ball. We're not trying to hit it as hard as we can. We're not looking for a ton of acceleration just yet because you're just starting these progressions the first time you're doing the kick serve maybe. The faster you swing, the more likely you are to go back to your old technical habits. So not looking for a ton of racket head speed here, but we're doing the full motion besides the follow through. Let's see how this one goes. All right? And one more time. Good. So I'm going to show you uh, from the back view here, last progression is you just simply finish the swing, although you should be doing the same things you did with all the other progressions where you make contact low, after contact continue up, and then you just do your usual follow through. The follow through should naturally finish more on your dominant side a bit more so than, than your other type of serve. So let's see what we got here, full motion. I'm going to swing a little bit fast just to show off a bit. Here we go. Okay. But if you notice, hopefully you see that after the ball bounces, it jumps to the right, and that's really hard to, to read that ball. You're going to find yourself on offense a lot. You can get a quality kick serve like that. So remember the most important things. We've got the toss. We've got the grip. We've got the the swing path and the contact point. If you master all four of those things, use these progressions, do each, each progression uh, slowly, gradually, make sure you don't go to the next progression until you've mastered the previous progression. You are gonna have a great kick serve in no time. So once again, my name is Jeremy and uh, I'm with Fundamental Tennis. Uh, please give me a like, subscribe, let me know what you think of the video. And I certainly enjoyed making this video. I hope you found great value in this and I hope to hear from you soon and, and uh, I like, love you to continue watching my future videos as I think that you can learn from those as well.